This morning, we are at MRO Association of India's 2021 seminar taking place at Pride Plaza, New Delhi. And it is an honor to have with me uh, Mr. Bharat Malkani, who is the president of the association, Mr. Malkani. Yes, uh, good morning and good morning to all people who are viewing this broadcast. Uh, pleasure to have you with us. Uh, the MRO Association is the apex body of Indian aircraft engineering companies. Our membership ranges from the smallest single aircraft operator to the likes of Hindustan Aeronautics and Air India, plus all the airlines and companies in between. And uh, we welcome you to our session. I would like to know from you the wish list which you had in mind and which has been fulfilled and which has remained unfulfilled, sir. Wishes are many, but uh, the government, the current dispensation, has been very proactive in coming forward and helping this industry, clearly recognizing the need for this industry to be a part of Atma Nirbhar Bharat. And Atma Nirbhar Bharat here is not a word. It is really the enunciation of Indian aviation. In a country that uh, is the world's third largest, perhaps fourth largest GDP, we import all our aircraft. Um, so whether you're a worker working in the fields of the Punjab or a laborer sending money as an expatriate to Kerala, the monies that we earn in thousands and thousands of millions of laborers uh, end up paying for the few aircraft that we buy. And we are convinced that a time has come where India develops its own aviation ecosystem, both in terms of manufacturing and MRO. And MRO before manufacturing, because MRO essentially is ensuring continued air safety and airworthiness of the aircraft. So the MRO Association as such has been working closely with the government in uh, trying to find better ways to encourage the development of this industry where we have estimated that for civil MRO alone, we are spending $2 billion a year, that's uh, 15,000 crores, and military $6 billion a year. And the military number is estimated, we don't have actual number. So we're looking at you know, 30, 40, 50,000 crores a year being spent, hard-earned money of our taxpayer, of our laborer, of our farmer, of our fisherman for imports. I think it is something that we really need to reverse that trend. And on that basis, um, and having gotten that message clearly, the first one to react was Ministry of Civil Aviation when they reduced our tax rate because the import tax rate on MRO was 5%, Indian industry was 18 Today we have a 5% on both. And we strongly believe, to answer your question, wish list, that this 15, this 5% that we have for Indian industry must either go to zero while foreign stays at five or the foreign goes to 18. I mean, they have had a run of 18% on us, thereby enabling them to capture the entire market for the last 70 years. Uh, you buy anything. You know, I like motorcycles. And if I buy an imported motorcycle, you will charge me 100% duty. But I fail to understand why there is 0% duty on foreign MRO. So we believe there should be a duty structure. Uh, we believe if they were not protesting our 18%, we will not protest their 18%. And that will give an encouragement. The second uh, issue that the government has sought is the ones with airport lands. So airport lands historically were not available to MROs. They were available to airlines, excellent and private aircraft operators. A private aircraft operator uses the hangar for parking his aircraft or his toy as the case may be. MRO can use an aircraft hangar to support at least 30, 40, maybe 50 aircraft a year. Thereby saving vital foreign exchange and bringing thousands and thousands of jobs to the country. So that policy has now changed. While we are no longer saying that you cannot give to airlines or the private operator, MROs will also be given facilities at all AAI airports 
AI has done away with royalties as well, as they have announced, which was a kind of a hidden tax ranging from 13 to 25, maybe 30 percent that made Indian MROs unviable. Eventually, we will move to what is known as harmonization uh, between Indian regulatory authorities and global regulatory authorities like FAA and EASA. Uh, and we believe that will be the step that will require the maximum of effort from both the association and the ministry, but mandatorily required to be done if we are going to become the global standard organization as a country. So when I see MRO, I see India. Uh, there are not that many Indian MROs. The total MRO spend of India, if it is 1.5 to 2 billion, Indian industry all combined is hardly able to do 100 billion dollars. Mm. So the numbers are scary. 95% or 94% comes to the import route. And this is just civil aviation. Military, like I said, we don't have data and I would rather not put that data here. But it is, let's use the word, substantial. So, in order to get there, we must follow global best practices. And the leadership role globally for aviation is from the United States. There is no doubting it. Despite whatever hiccups we've seen recently about Boeing, the American organizations are extremely robust, uh, profitable, and they have actual global dominion. For us to be able to compete with them, we must also make our policies as agile and follow the best practices in terms of regulatory. This will ensure that the Indian industry is not left behind and we are able to grow at a pace to be able to at least A, make sure the aircraft we have we do the MRO in-house. And our promise to Ministry of Civil Aviation is that we will start doing exports and there is nothing in my mind that says no. I actually see uh, Indian industry going to come in like a $5 billion industry in 10 years. And as uh, distant as that may seem to a lot of people, this comes on the confidence that when we set up our organization, Max Aerospace, in a 80 square foot garage, uh, we're going to be one of the premier MROs of the country today. So we had that confidence then, we have the confidence now. Um, our wishes are simple. All you seek is a level playing field and uh, uh, benefit to Indian industry. It's hardly something that the government should refuse. Thank you, sir. I think, uh, Mr. Milkani, you have spoken from the heart. As Mr. Abdul Kalam, our ex-president, former president, used to say, dream, dream, and dream. If you don't dream, you don't achieve it. And at MRO Association, you are there, and you are a dreamer. I've seen you for years, and I'm sure your wish list will definitely be achieved. And MOCA, the way I heard this morning, Mr. Amber is speaking, is fully in support. And uh, I think the environment is uh, trying to help us and wish you best of luck to you as well as MRO Association. Thank you, sir.